Hello everyone and welcome back to part 12 of this series and as you see here stacked beside me uh, this is where you should be. You should have uh, either one of these stacks or the other. I've got EPS and its uh, templates here, the XPS and its templates here. Now we're going to talk about uh, something that's, that's critical, and that's alignment and how to make the alignment marks that's going to follow you all the way through the process. You can't just whack these things on the block and start chopping it out. The alignment marks that I'm going to show you coming up next are critical. Stick around. This is just a quick look at the setup that I use for slicing foam. We're going to have to slice uh, one of the uh, EPS blocks to 20 millimeters, and this is how I do it. Uh, I've actually got two. This is quarter inch 20 threaded rod that's in an insert in the table, and I use it for the thicker cuts. Uh, for the thinner, I just drop washers or these little two millimeter thick pieces of metal that I just had around. And you can slice foam paper, paper thin. And that's the setup that I'm going to use to slice the 20 millimeter first uh, section of foam for our fuselage and the EPS. Now, since the XPS is already, I've got some 20 millimeter already, I don't have to slice it, but the front segments that have to be sliced to a different thickness other than 40 millimeters for the XPS and 48 for the EPS will be sliced just like this. Now the thing to do, of course, I've already turned on my power supply. Now my power supply is set for constant amperage, which means that no matter where I connect the clips, it will deliver a certain amperage, a certain heat to the wire. And you'll notice I have the clips uh, on the inside. Uh, it would drive it, even if the clips were on the outside. However, the large uh, threaded rod here uh, absorbs heat and it's just a waste. So if you clip your clips on the inside, then uh, that's not a problem. Just the wire between the clips is all that's heated. Now I've, I've set this up for a 20 millimeter cut and I've got a scrap piece of foam here. So let's go ahead. What we'll do now is just turn on the wire. And I'll just run this through, and this will just be, you can see the old foam burning off of it. And it just runs through, cuts like butter. And we'll talk about proper heat for the various cuts in a bit. And now there is a sample, and I can measure that. I already have, it's 20 millimeters. But you can cut and measure to make sure that your slicer is set up correctly and there it is 20 millimeter thick slice of foam okay so I'll slice the first 20 millimeter and I believe uh, it's 28 millimeter for the first two uh, foam sections of the fuselage Next up, we want to start putting some reference marks on our foam blocks. And in order to do that so that they'll all be encompassed in the block sizes that we earlier determined, you have to pick out the tallest former. And in this case, they're both um, in the EPS and the other XPS foams. It was F4 and F5 they turned out to be the tallest. We have a little bit of space at the bottom, a little bit of space at the top, and that means that all of the rest of the formers, when we line them up, will be 
uh, encompassed in the blocks that we've cut out for them. Now, the important thing to note here, we're going to determine a center line. That will be easy. The important thing to note here is the height of the datum line because this is the height that we're going to have to transfer to all the foam blocks to make sure that they're in there and that is 52 millimeters. So we're going to draw a line at 52 millimeters around every foam block and a vertical in every foam block so that we can center the templates. And again, I can't stress enough how important it is to keep these marks accurate. So once again, I'm going to double check my measurements. That's 52 millimeters. So I'll show you how to set up to make a 52 millimeter mark around all of these. And here's the trick that works for me. Take a piece of uh, scrap foam and a sharpie and by trimming the foam with your hot wire cutter you can end up with a depth for the point of exactly 52 millimeters and then we just start marking out all the box. Set the blocks on a base. Let me turn this down, make sure we're getting getting this in the photo here anyway, huh? Just set the box block on its base. Hold the Sharpie up against it. And make your line. You have to have the line on both sides because what's necessary now, this is a very, very, very fine line marker, but there is a mark there and that mark is at 52 millimeters and that's what we need all of these marked at on the face sides for every one. So I'll stop this and, uh, and mark them all and we'll get right back. Okay, all the blocks now have their 52 millimeter line drawn parallel of course to the bottom of the block. Now from here on out the orientation of these blocks need to be noted of course. This is kind of a lot taller at the top and the bottom. The easy way to do that is to just mark on the side, mark an arrow on the side of the block, uh, sort of this end up sort of thing. And also only mark it on one side because we're going to keep these sides oriented in the same direction. That way you don't get accumulating errors. So take each block now and on side, just pick a side and mark the top. That's one of the that's the 20 millimeter slice. There we go. Mark the mark the top and set them aside because we're going to uh, make another one of these to mark the center line. But again, we're going to keep all these oriented in the same direction now from here on out throughout the entire process. So you need to make these marks. I'll go ahead and mark them and come back. Okay guys, I've made another block of uh, scrap foam cut to the height to hold this at 57 and a half millimeters, which is half the width of our blocks. Now, make sure when you scribe this line, you keep the same side down. I'm going to select the side that I put the up arrow on, and that side will face down. Then I'll scribe the center line. keeping that side down the whole time. That way any irregularities are kept on one side or the other side and they don't add up or mix up. So now, arrow down and mark them all the same way again. Okay everyone, all the uh, initial marking out is done. And again, by keeping the same side down, 
of course the the lower part down when we did the uh, the short market 52 and then by keeping the marked side with the arrow this time down when we did both of these everything is kept parallel so any minor inaccuracies in the way you cut the block will not matter we're not saving the block we're saving what we cut out of the heart of the block so as long as our lines line up and as long as this little X mark here matches this little X mark in the back we're going to be fine because all the rest will be waste and cut away now we'll move on to uh, putting the templates on the foam. Before we can actually start cutting, we've got to get the templates mounted to the foam. And it's, let me see if I can get this up there where you can see it well enough. It's absolutely imperative that all of the radial marks that you made here on all the uh, horizontal and vertical axes, they have to align with the marks that you put on the foam. Because we are dealing with so many sections, if you start getting off, your fuselage is going to look kind of strange at the end. So make sure you get these aligned perfectly. Now I've used various things to actually uh, temporarily stick these to the foam while I cut it, uh, but I've used everything from glue stick to rubber cement, but the thing that I found that works best are these little, oh, I guess you call them map pins. Uh, see if I can focus on that. Don't know if it will or not, but there you go. These little map pins work a treat. They have about a, uh, oh, half inch long needle point. Let's see if I can hold this over something dark so that you can see it. Maybe up here. Okay. And they go into the foam far enough to grip, uh, but you don't have to worry about using something extremely long that would pass all the way through one of the thinner uh, pieces of foam. So again, taking great, great care. We'll start out by putting F1 on the front of this and F2 on the back. But again, the alignment is critical. It has to be perfect. Okay guys, I'll try to get a close-up shot here uh, to show you what I'm talking about when you align these things. The alignment has to match and we'll move up here. Now that looks like it's off, but it's because of parallax. The thickness of the uh, the actual tag board. I don't know if that's focusing or not for you, but you have to be that accurate. It has to be right on. All right, now uh, I've mounted uh, F1, the, uh, the template for F1 and F2. And again, because they're precisely aligned, uh, what happens to the remainder of this excess foam doesn't matter, it's going to be cut away, but because they're precisely aligned, we'll have a precise foam segment to use to stack up. So this is actually ready to cut. Now I've found that four of these little pins normally hold um, whatever I'm going to cut into the foam good enough. You might need five, six, sometimes I'll use more, of course, on the, on the larger uh, sections use more. Um, and when you get really tiny ones like the tail end Charlie, you might have to stick that on with uh, glue stick or something. If you get down, uh, this one is not going to be the case because the last section in this is uh, is got plenty of diameter, but some of the smaller models I've built, I just had to stick it on with glue stick. But you do not want this to move. Whatever you have to do to get this on here, don't glob on adhesive if you can. Just, just don't do that. Use something that's uh, non-adhesive if you can and stick that to it. So now we've got this ready. This is actually ready to cut. Well, guys, here we are. Like my granddad used to say, now we're down to the real rat killing. This will be all for this episode. 
but we'll get into actually cutting these next episode because I do need to talk about uh, wire temperatures and how to set them so that you can accurately do this. Can't be too hot, can't be too cold. Uh, you know, like uh, Goldilocks and Three Bears. It's got to be, the porridge has got to be just right. But we'll get these cut. And I also want to talk uh, pretty extensively about how we're going to bond them together. Um, you can save yourself a lot of grief. Um, I've got some hints that, uh, that we'll go over uh, in that video. So this, uh, this little short video got us to the point where we're about to, uh, to do something real here. So hopefully you'll come back. Thank you for sticking around this long.